Hi, everybody, and welcome to Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I am so glad to be talking with comics creator, author, artist, June Brigman. June, welcome to the podcast, and thank you for, for jumping on and talking Thanks with me for a little me. bit. Oh, absolutely, my, my pleasure. Um, I suppose the first question, the way I usually kick this off, is the, the path to comics, but I'll also mention that you and I have just been talking about um the the role of the teacher as well because i know that you uh teach part-time and uh share the the love of art that way so glad to hear about that and, and glad to hear about uh what it was about comics that drew you in uh actually it was it was drawing that, that drew me in uh, nice nice <laughs> i uh i did not read comics growing up i just wasn't really interested. I mostly read books about horses. And, um, but I had always drawn, um, you know, I, I always loved drawing and, and artwork. And I, I knew I wanted to be an artist, a professional artist, a working artist, getting paid to do artwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was a, a freshman at the University of Georgia, my boyfriend, who's now my husband, was really into comics. Uh -huh, uh -huh. he he really got he got me interested in comics uh I had never read a comic book before I didn't really understand even how to read a comic how did yep. you know which panel or which word balloon to go to oh hi, 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 hi hi there. There. <laughs> I have lots of cats so there will be a cat tail going by it everywhere. works it totally works <laughs> um but he actually I, I think one of the first comic books I saw that I was really taken in by was uh, uh Jack Kirby's fourth world um new gods comic oh, yeah. um it was just like kind of like falling through the rabbit hole looking at that comic book and then I went to um I went to a comic book convention in Atlanta Mm -hmm. and met uh, uh, a lot of professional artists who were there and they were drawing while they were there doing commission sketches. And I didn't know you could draw that way. I didn't know you could draw that well and that believably without reference, without a model, mm -hmm. without photos. These guys were just doing it on the spot. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I thought it looked like a lot of fun and I knew I had always liked drawing and that's, was what got me interested in, in comics as a career. Love it, love it. Uh, talking about the the process of reading a comic, I, I use comics in class a good bit. Mm -hmm. And so I, I try to acquaint teachers with them and people that want to be teachers. And that's one of the challenges I, I've explored. There's a beauty to the page, but there's also people sort of assume that kids just kind of come to it naturally. And so I usually start with like a wordless comic or something like that to mm -hmm focus on the art first because we're so word driven that we focus on the words and then get to the end and it's like yeah, there's so yeah. much to appreciate that's a good point yeah yeah now you mentioned that you have a comics creator boyfriend now husband is it a trade secret to say who that is is that oh okay? no not at all we've been working together <laughs> for, you know 40 years now uh his name is roy richardson Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um the flash being one of those time. yeah and yeah. Um, he um is is an inker um he does inking lettering coloring we kind of have a little cottage industry Love going it. here so yeah yeah we we work together we didn't work together very much when we were starting out um we were teamed up with other other artists but um, at some point, I, I guess it was when we did a Star Wars miniseries together. Mm -hmm. like, okay, one stop shopping, you know, <laughs> <laughs> don't have to put her together with an inker. I, I rarely ink my own work. I just, um, you know, I don't have the time. And it's it's a lot. Of, it's a big time commitment to draw and ink a comic. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing I think people underestimate very often is just how work intensive it is it is it is yeah, yeah. i figure I, I could probably make more money per hour working at mcdonald's sometimes <laughs> not there's anything wrong with that but uh but yeah it just it takes a lot of hours yeah it sounds like you have a nice nurturing uh collaboration and companionship though so that's that's a very well, nice thing it is it, i think it comes down to he knows what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. 
we leave each other alone. And mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife is also a teacher and she writes. And so uh, we have a little bit of that dynamic too, of yeah. uh, complimenting each other and, and talking about things, but then also we, we do our own things as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll mention a couple of titles, characters that folks would probably know. I started reading comics in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And so Power Pack being uh, one of those books that people probably know you well for. Uh, 19, the mid-1990s was also a heyday for me because there was so much happening in comics. Right. There was kind of like an early 90s comics explosion there. And so you had... Um, the Star Wars miniseries, I think, around that time that you mentioned, as well yeah, as Supergirl. Um, mm -hmm. Supergirl series. Um, I worked on uh, on Alpha Flight for about a year. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. I did uh, two She-Hulk graphic novels. Uh, just kind of after Power Pack, I, I kind of jumped around on a lot of different books. Yeah, I actually really, I have a, a warm place in my heart for Alpha Flight. I really mm -hmm. do. Um, I think I got to know both that team and the West Coast Avengers just based on the time I started reading before right. I really got to know the classic Avengers team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of great work being done around that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was going to ask about particularly positive collaborations um, and I tend to to ask about the positives because I like to hear about those. I think I know the name of the person that you might mention. I've just heard really good things about this person in the comics industry, but uh, any really positive collaborations and relationships that that bubble to the surface as you think about your work? Well, pretty much all the, the people I've worked with, it's it's been positive. I've worked with some really, really talented writers, inkers, colorists. Um, I've been very fortunate in that respect. Uh, I mean, the first one I, I always have to mention is Louise Simonson. Right, right. Um, she really, you know, I, I'm not so sure we'd be sitting here talking to each other if it weren't for Louise. She just came along at the right time. I was in the right place at the right time. Um, this was the age, when I first started, was the age of the superheroes. Superheroes were everything. Yeah. And I really wasn't very good at drawing superheroes the big beefy male type you know i couldn't draw or to save my life um and she came up with the idea of, of this book of child superheroes power pack and mm -hmm. i was like okay i can do this yeah. and yeah. that really got me started in the industry and we've worked together many times since we've worked on power pack she wrote the star wars miniseries i did um we did some books uh, gosh, it's probably been 10, 12 years ago for DC and this convergence, you know, story arc they did. Um, it was a, two issues of Steel and um, and we still work together. Mm. So that that was a great collaboration. Um, I also worked with with Dwayne McDuffie on the two She-Hulk books. And, you know, he was wonderful. He was wonderful. Just gone too soon. Mm -hmm. And um, and I I currently been working with uh, a writer named Stuart Moore. Yeah, who's yeah. been around the business for quite a while. We uh, he came to me with an idea for a series which is basically cats in space called Captain Ginger. And um, before that, we had worked for a company called Tishkeel that um, published. Um, they distributed comics in the Middle East. They were based in Kuwait. And um, that was when we first worked together. And uh, oh, wow. he's a wonderful writer, too. So, uh, yeah, I've just been been very fortunate in my collaborations. Always, always a good thing. Always a good thing to hear about. And I thought that Louise Simonson might be one of the people that you mentioned, um, not only because you, you work together with Louise prolifically, but I've just heard such nice things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, she has helped a lot of people, a lot of young artists who are getting started. Yeah. Um, you know, Brett Blevins, John Bogdanoff. Uh, I, I can't even think of all the artists that she's, you know, she and her husband, Walt, have really helped along the way. And when yeah. we first moved to New York, um, we lived just outside the city. and They were in the city. And, you know, 
they helped us get through. Uh, that was a tough, that was a tough time for us just starting out and they'd take us to dinner, let us stay over at their apartment and, um, you know, and also just share their skill and experience with us. Awesome. So, awesome. Um, they're, they're very generous people. Lovely. Very lovely. I think I have Stuart Moore coming on uh, as long as the stars align and the zoom links work. Mm -hmm. I think Stuart Moore is coming on in a couple of weeks, maybe uh, being the person who was one of the founders of vertigo. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be sure and, and link back to this conversation when I talk with Stuart as well. Yeah. Stuart's great. Yeah. Yeah. I will also mention um, comics for Ukraine. The Scott oh. Dunbeer ID, IDW uh, book, which I think is an, another collaboration that you have with Louise Simonson. Right, right. Um, we just did, at the time, I can't remember what I was working on. I really wanted to be involved in the project. So it worked out well. Um, Wheezy came, Wheezy is what we all call her, mm -hmm. came up with a, a three page story, just three pages. But she's such a good writer. It's intense. Yeah. And I think people will be a little shocked um, when they read it and, and see this story. But yeah, it was an honor to be involved with that. And, and you know, great of Scott to put it together. And, you know, unfortunately, it's still a very valid issue that we're dealing mm -hmm. with. It's ongoing. And then it will end, so... You know, if we could do anything, any little thing I can do to to help out um, Ukrainian refugees, glad to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I imagine that's readily available on IDW's side and other spaces as well. Is that the case? I would think so. I I I'm sorry. I don't. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. With that that information to give out. But I would think if anybody who Googles it would be able to to find it. Yeah, yeah. and I'll be sure and link it in the, the podcast description okay. too. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So as you look back and as you're looking forward, are there stories, worlds, um, themes, or, or any of those pieces that you would want to go back and revisit or um, to tackle anew? Um, well, I always like going back to, to Power Pack. Uh, I, I really like to do another story about Franklin Richards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who has, a, you know, sometimes has play dates with the power pack. He's just a, a really interesting kind of sad little boy character. And, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to do some more stories with Franklin and uh, I'd also like to do some more stories with Stuart Moore with our, our Captain Ginger book. Um, mm -hmm. We have two more issues coming out this fall that wrap up some loose storylines, but there's still one part of the story that we haven't resolved yet that um, of Captain Ginger and his father, who we, we he still hasn't found. I'd like to, to do something with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I've i been fortunate to play in some fun sandboxes along the way, but yeah, Power Pack and Captain Ginger, I mean, those are, are you know, books that I was a co-creator mm -hmm. on, uh, so I think that that gives me a, a little more of a, a feeling of connection to those characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate the comics work that you've done and the uh, stories that you've shared in, in the wider universe of comics. I, I love the fact that you're a teacher and uh, that you're currently investing in people that are that are coming up and that are uh, moving through the industry. So I, I appreciate both of those things about you. Um, any, I, I guess, so the Stuart Moore series, any other events or um, web spaces or anything like that that you want to make sure that people know about? Um, well, yeah, it, this fall, I think it's October, November, November, December. There will be two more issues of our Captain Ginger comic done by Stuart, myself. Um, my husband is anchor. Veronica Gandini is colorist. And this is Sir Ahoy Comics. And it, it mm -hmm. will wrap up some storylines that that 
we didn't quite cover in the the first 10 issues that we did. Um, but also, um, I think they're going to announce it this fall. Um, there's going to be another five issue power pack series that will come out, I believe, January. Oh, great, great. And, um, uh, it's going to be it's going to pick up really right where we left off. The The kids have maybe aged one year. It's back Wonderful. to the 80s. Um, yeah, and Franklin's in that, and uh, some, you know, the Snarks and the Chameleons and uh, some new characters, too. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So that should be out in January. Awesome, awesome. Uh, my last question is not officially on the list, so feel free to pass mm -hmm. if you need some time to think about it. But um, just thinking about folks working in the industry now or future of the industry, any uh, anybody that has your attention who's currently creating in the world of comics and or anything that you want to say about where you think comics are headed from here? Oh gosh, there are so many. There are just some amazing artists working in comics now that just really, especially some women artists that are just mm -hmm. so good. Um, gosh, Joelle Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, a young woman, I think, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's working on Supergirl. I think she's Italian. It looks like Bilkis Evely. I uh -huh. know I'm not her name. Marguerite Sauvage, um, Allison Sampson, uh, just some some really amazing women. Uh, Sarah Pacelli, uh -huh. amazing women doing yeah. great work. And um, and the guys too. I mean, I love Chris Samney, love Sean Murphy. Uh, uh -huh. Just, yeah, some great, great, exciting work being done. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I, the future of comics, um, I, I I think it's going to be a more creator-owned work, to mm -hmm. tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, back when I was starting, you worked for Marvel or DC, some other comics, you know, some companies came along the way. There was Tops, which I don't think exists anymore as far as comics, Dark Horse. Um, but, you know, that was pretty much, you know, what you, what you did. Um, mm -hmm. but there are tons of, of indie, you know, smaller companies now. Um, but I, I think it's, it's going to be more creator owned. Um, yeah. and maybe web comics, webtoons going yeah. in that direction i mean I, I still love hard copy and i don't think anything can really you know replace holding that book in your hand mm -hmm. but it's just i think so much uh i think it's just an easier path really to do your own characters and get your own work out there there are avenues available to creators now that just did not exist before the digital you know internet age and, um, and it's kind of nice yeah definitely definitely and uh i also love how comics have sort of opened up one of my favorite um pieces of research about comics is this article called these aren't just boy books mm -hmm. um and it it really dives into sort of pushing back on the idea that comics are for a limited audience so uh and a limited set of creators so i also love that there there are more female creators now uh, more creators from minoritized populations. So it's, it's right. been very exciting to follow in the past 10 years or so. I, I, I credit a lot of that to um, manga and anime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started, there just, there weren't girls in comics and it wasn't because of any sort of bias. Mm -hmm. We just weren't really that interested. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there was, you know, superhero comics were for, basically pubescent boys you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i really think i think the an anime and manga has gotten a lot of young women interested in comics and telling stories with pictures so that's nice yeah, yeah. and I, I see a lot of young creators in my classroom and a lot of them tend to be females creating manga so that's, that's yeah. also really nice to see yeah it is i i when I first started, I first started teaching at um, the Joe Kubert School of Cartoon Art, 
and that was like 2005 and there were hardly any women mm -hmm. any women in the classes all guys but then by the time I started teaching I taught um for nine years at um Savannah College of Art and Design in Atlanta and during that time period from like 2009 to 2018 I saw a transition I Love saw it. the classrooms become more and more you know more young women like I would say about 50 50 now that's very nice yeah yeah and uh, I'm sure you're also one of those people that they can look to and say hey here's a person who who's been doing this and uh someone Still that can it. share that story what's no, that I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> yeah for 40 years now I'm still at it and you know also do a newspaper comic strip yes yeah uh so, Brenda Starr yeah yeah Brenda Starr and when that was canceled um then a few years ago we took over another comic strip called Mary Worth mm -hmm. and uh that's what I'm doing today is working on that so um yeah I, I I think it's it is a good time to be in comics I think there's a ton of competition Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of opportunity and the field is so wide open as far as genres you want to tackle, um, styles to work in. Mm -hmm. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Oh. Well said. Very well said. And I, I'm so glad that you're still creating and still putting stories out there and looking forward to the work to come. And uh, I promised you a brief chat, so uh, so I appreciate the the talk about comics and all of the, all of the ways that you've contributed. Well, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure too.